just jump right into it. Just. Well, howdy. My name is Sanjay. I'm a UI UX designer and developer based out of Franklinton, North Carolina. In this video, I'm going to be talking about functions.php and how you might use it to render things service side in your WordPress site. All right, so here we are in our Groovy new site again. And if this is new to you, definitely check out the other videos in this playlist and it will help you kind of get up to speed about where we are in the development cycle. So in our Groovy new site, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start the site. And uh, like I said, today, we're gonna be talking about functions.php. So let's jump into VS Code and take a look at what we got. All right, so in functions.php, what we have here is our groovy nq scripts function. We also have an add action function. Basically, this is just nqing or loading in the different scripts that our particular child theme has. Today, what we're going to do is figure out how to render some other things on the server side. And to do that, I feel like a great example is to create a short code. Now, before we actually go ahead and create that, I always feel like it's a great idea to just go ahead and create our features branch and get all that set up. So as you might remember, let me uh, drag this up here. So as you might remember, we have, um, we have our main branch, right? And our main branch is where everything's being uh, ultimately merged to. So we wanna create a features branch. So I'm gonna do git, check out, create a branch, call it features. And this particular one is gonna be creating a short code. And I know that I'm gonna be grabbing the current year. So I'm gonna say current year short code. Awesome. And it said now it's switched to a new branch features current year short code. Great. So now we can start adding some of our code. Let's go over to the post down in the description and see what's there. And we're gonna grab that code, I'll bring it back and we'll talk about it. First step that we'll do is actually, we're gonna create the current year short code and then initialize it um, in the whole uh, loading uh, sequence with WordPress. So let's grab this code and bring it into VS Code and talk about it. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here let me remove this line. Basically what you're gonna find is that there's two major things going on. We are declaring a function uh, called groovy get current year. We're getting the current year and registering a short code. Then we're going to actually initialize that short code in the init phase um, uh, during our WordPress kind of loading sequence. And so there's two things, that function called groovy get current year, and then an add action function, which is basically native to WordPress. All right, so let's open this up. And what you're gonna see here is there is an add short code function. That's a WordPress function that takes two parameters. And what this is, what you'll see is there's a, a groovy current year. This is just the name of the short code. So you're gonna use the same thing. You'll see it in a second, but we're gonna use the same uh, string in order to add our short code uh, to our Divi site. And then the next one is a callback function that takes three parameters, it takes an attributes parameter, a content parameter, and a short code tag parameter. And you can certainly go into the WordPress documentation and get a feel for what each of those things can do. Okay, and then uh, inside of our callback function, we're basically just saying return the date. Now date is a uh, PHP uh, little magical function that just grabs the date. And in this particular case, we're just saying, hey, grab for me the year. And that's what, that's what I want you to grab is the year. All right, and then, uh, so that's just our short code, and then we are um, adding the short code, uh, basically saying during the init phase, so the init phase is basically after WordPress is ready, it's like ready to actually send everything, right before it's ready to send everything over to the client in this init phase, that's when we want to render this groovy current year function, okay? So now what I can do is, um, but before I actually add a, uh, like start adding uh, my git commits, what I wanna do is test this out. So I'm gonna hit save here and jump over to our site. So here we are in our dashboard. I've signed in as the administrator, in this case it's me. 
And um, you can do with with a sort code. You can do whatever you want. You can put it in a post. You can put it in a page. Uh, I like to put the current year short code inside of my Divi footer. So if you go down to Divi, Theme Builder, I'm going to add a global footer, build a global footer. Great. Okay. So now it's going to give me this blank slate. And what I'm going to do is add some color just so you can see it. Add a row and then I'm going to add a text module and uh, let's go over to the post and we're going to grab this copyright text don't worry i'll explain it okay add it here awesome and uh, just so you can see it why don't we go ahead and I'm going to center this make it brighter and we will add some boldness, make it large so you can see it. Okay, so you can see here it's already kind of rendered a few things for us, which is nice. Um, in previous versions of Divi, when you added a uh, short code here, um, it would still, it would just basically say the short code, so you'd have to save it, and then you would basically be able to see it um, on the front end once you're out of the Divi builder. But in this case, in our uh, Divi uh, current version, uh, it's rendering it for us. So let's let's look at what this is doing. So we have copyright, just standard copyright text, groovy, all rights reserved, right? And then right here is our short code. Now, this short code is like the name of the short code is really important. All right, so let's let's hit save. So this is the right way. I'll show you the wrong way in a second. So hit save and save the page. Exit out, save changes, awesome. And we'll go and visit the site. And look at that, we have the copyright. Um, it says 2022, which is the current year. Awesome. All right, and now remember I told you that the name of the shortcode is really important. So if we go back into dashboard, just so I can demonstrate this, go into theme builder and edit this global footer. All right, so let's go back in here. I just wanna show you. So let's take a look at our code. Okay, and in our code, what we see is the name is Groovy Current Year. Okay, and it's the same thing as the short code tag. If you look at the WordPress documentation, technically the parameters for add short code are tag and a callback function. So these needs to match up, Groovy Current Year, Groovy Current Year. Now, what you'll notice, and this is where it's easy to get confused, is um, you have the name of the function, which is very similar to the tag name, but those are logically separate. So if I were to, just as an example, if I were to like, oh, this is the name of my short code, and then I go in here, and uh, basically I would just go in and say, oh, this is the name of my short code, uh, add it here. What you're going to notice is that it, uh, oh, <laughs> well, there's some formatting issues. But what you're going to notice is that it doesn't render it. It basically just keeps it um, as just like bracket syntax because it's not recognizing that, oh, hey, this is a short code that has been registered with WordPress. So you just got to make sure that you're using the correct uh, string. Okay, so in this case, we just say groovy current year. Okay, I think that's it. Let's go back and check. Yep, groovy current year. Hit save here. Save again. Okay. Make sure the changes are saved. Visit the site. Oh, and uh, I'm noticing up another problem here. So we have groovy current year. Uh, but for some reason, it doesn't like it. So let's figure out why. Okay, so we're back here, and uh, <laughs> let's see here. Okay, I'm. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do, what I, whenever I run into issues with the text module, I like to go into the HTML side of things. So if you see, it's there's a visual tab and a text tab, and what you'll see is that it, um, it added some extra 
styling here. So it added a span tag. So let's delete that. And actually we can go ahead and remove this too. There we go. All right. So that's a little bit of a weird bug, but basically um, just remember that your uh, the name of your shortcode function needs to match up um, to the tag that you put in the add shortcode uh, function. All right, as a final step, what we need to do is make sure that we commit these changes. So let's look at what branch we're on. Okay, so we're on our features current year shortcode branch. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and commit these changes. So git commit. Oh, sorry. Git add first. Git add function stop PHP. And then we're going to commit them with these. Uh, this particular message, and I'm going to say um, add shortcode function to return current year. Great. Hit enter. Awesome. Now I want to push this up to the remote. So git push origin, because origin is our remote. And we're going to say pull it from features current your short code. Just hit tab to uh, populate that. Great. And now what we want to do is uh, go into GitHub and just make sure that everything pushed up correctly. So in GitHub, what I'm going to do is open a new pull request, new pull request, and we're going to say grab it from the current year short code. Awesome. Create that pull request. And uh, I'm going to say um, uh, create current year short code. Awesome. Add a label of feature. And we're going to create this pull request. Great. Looks like everything worked as expected. We merged this pull request. Okay. And the next thing that we need to do is go back into Visual Studio Code and uh, merge in those changes to our main branch there. So here we are again. Let me clear this up for you. So let's check out to our main branch. Awesome. And um, what we're going to do here is a git pull from origin. Awesome. And let me just double check. Let's see, get pull from origin to main. Okay, looks like something. Okay, perfect, perfect. So everything came in um, as expected. Now, before we go, I did also want to add that I've used the functions.php file to add shortcodes for custom menus. I've added redirects functions, form logic. There's a lot you can do, and it's a ton of fun. So just remember that your functions.php file, uh, this one up here, your functions.php file is uh, specifically used to add uh, server-side logic. And anytime you're adding other like JavaScript-y kind of things, that is when you're doing things on the client side. And uh, a good demonstration of that, if we go back here, um, let's go ahead and hit save. Right, visit site. Okay, so what you're going to remember is that we added, let's hit inspect. Now, what you're going to remember is that we added a um, a short code here. So in 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 here, you see copyright, and it and it just renders it as 2022, right? That's because um, the client is requesting this page from the server. The server does whatever it needs to do, cleans up the code, and then sends it over to the client. So you actually don't see any PHP here, which is pretty cool. If you added this um, current year function with JavaScript, you would see the JavaScript code and you would see all, all the, the innards and all the guts of it. So um, I think it's pretty cool what you can do with functions.php and especially what you can do with server-side code in WordPress.
So the two things you need to know is that we have client side code and server side code. In our last video, we talked about client side code with JavaScript. And in this video, we talked about using functions.php to add server side code. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.